The true history of Valentine's Day is maybe not what you think. There is an untold story, and I'll tell you about it right now. Roses, chocolates, beautiful heart-shaped doilies, and heart-shaped candies are part of Valentine's Day. Cards as well, presents, dozens of roses. And all of your friends who are couples going out to dinner tonight, tonight's one of the most popular nights to dine out. Well, we're assuming tonight's Valentine's Day. By the way, those who are watching live know it's February 13th, but the secret show with Mark and I isn't on the 14th. So we're doing this show one day early. So we're pretending it's Valentine's Day. But if you're not a big fan of Valentine's Day, and you think it's a Hallmark card holiday so that uh, restaurateurs and flower companies and card companies and candy companies can make money. Well, <laughs> there's even more to it than that. Its origins lie in a drunken festival, beating of women and jail cells. It's true. It all started with the Romans. Valentine's Day did not start out with poems and chocolates. Every year, the ancient Romans celebrated the Feast of Lupercalia, from February 13th through the 15th. So I guess we're okay doing it on this day. And if you've ever heard of the disease lupus, where parts of your skin turn red, you can see where the red in Valentine's Day comes from. During this uh, Lupre Lupreconian festival, they celebrated the ancient god who protected the people from wolves. And at the beginning of the celebration, the men would sacrifice a goat and a dog and take their skin and make whips. And then women would be whipped with the whips that's pretty bad, but the women would voluntarily line up to do so because they were told it would help them be fertile. So a lot of guys into S&M and causing pain convinced women that this was a good idea. It worked. The town's young women would get in line and uh, ask for the men to hit them. It sounds like Fifty Shades of Grey, doesn't it? It's named after a saint, which is true. In the third century, Emperor Claudius II ordered for the death of two men on February 14. Their names were Valentine and Valentine. They were executed in different years, but the Catholic Church later honored them both as martyrs and named February 14th St. Valentine's Day. And in the fifth century, a pope decided to combine St. Valentine's Day with the uh, Lupercalia Festival. And there we go. So, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. No, no, seriously, what is that? Is that like a real candy? It's a lollipop, not? but you really can't bite it. Yeah, I don't think I'd bite that. I tried. And if I lick it, that'd be creepy. As if this isn't creepy enough. No, no. no. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good look for you. You look like you're straight out of a, a 70s movie with those glasses. Kind of, yeah. Where Did you actually have those or did you go out and find them? They're in my magic closet. Seriously? Yes. Wow. And, anyway. And lollipop? Uh, the lollipop I did purchase from a vegan company that makes vegan lollipops without gelatin, which is made from animal bones and <laughs> hoofs and whatever. So, Got it. but will I eat this? Perhaps in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> so as long as you know what a holiday is about, I think it's okay, my opinion, to celebrate it. But if you just go ahead and celebrate Valentine's Day without the knowledge of its dark history, then you might be, I don't know, forewarned is forearmed or something along those lines. You want lines. the lighter side of Valentine's Day? Here, here it is. Yes. My take on Valentine's Day, I treat it like any other greeting card holiday. I don't mm -hmm. care if it's Mother's Day, Father's Day, Secretary's Day, whatever. And that is the appreciation you have, you should show every freaking day. Agreed. I have never bought my parents a card. I've never bought a secretary a card. I've never, it's like, look, I enjoy your company as much today as any other day. You don't have to remind me. It is, is strictly there to, to make money and have people go out and buy tons of flowers and chocolates and, uh, sorry. And, and it, then it turns into an obligation thing. Not, not to say the weight is put on the men, but then the men are expected. It's like, well, you don't love me? It's like, no, I love you every freaking day. That's why I get it out of the way ahead of time. Of course, every, day, bra, every day, bra. <laughs> every day, bra. Yeah, really? Really? You're going to do that to me? Thanks. Um, and that was uh, Jake. Not Jake Logan. Paul, yes. Yeah, Jake Paul. We're every still day. waiting for the Logan Paul, uh, um, you know, I don't know what it's going to be, flat earth video that he's well, supposed it to come out with. 
it doesn't matter now because he subcontracted out the the final piece. So he got all you know, he, he released a video on this recently where he got all the footage and realized he could not edit it on his own. He couldn't do it. It's it's too big a topic. Yeah, he's got a team doing it for him. Well, yeah, but it's not his team. It's a it's another group. Oh, he I didn't know about that. Interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had to go out of house to do it because again the flat earth it's it's like anything we'll talk about some of the stuff that's been released recently but it's such a thick topic that unless you're unless you've got a good bead on what flat earth is <laughs> you're really you're gonna risk that we're, we're doing something next week do not risk your dental work now i don't have dental work i have real teeth although i did no, have braces no, no. growing I mean, up <laughs> don't risk any potential anything i'm sure you have strong teeth and you could bite fishing line in half it's very good hmm what flavor is it? Like a strawberry cherry, one on each side. Hmm. Really good. Yeah, I know. You could eat that and then turn it into an entire video se series on your own. That's a thing, you know. <laughs> I know, which is why I'm not licking it. No, oh, okay, good. All the world needs is a 56-year-old woman licking a lollipop wearing heart-shaped glasses. You're that... not 56. Oh, yeah, I just turned 56 February 5th, so. Well, congratulations and happy belated birthday. Thank you so much. You will never, you'll never look 56. You'll be dead and you still won't look 56. <laughs> it's true. Look at uh, look at Raquel Welch, for example. She looks great. She looks, she looks great. great. And I have no idea how old she is. I'm assuming she's about 130. Probably. And I think she's probably had some little nips and tucks, but nothing major. She doesn't look like um, well, a, freak, a freak show like some Hollywood celebs it, do. Come on. Let, let, let's be as honest as we can here. There are genetic lottery winners, and then there are the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, so. she's one of them for sure. Uh, by I'm the way, on this show to make Patricia look good. Don't <laughs> let anyone tell you different. That's all I'm here for. Well, we're going to talk about more than Valentine's Day, um, you know, candy, oh, drinking, by the way. This hearts. Is You're drinking? I, I need to go get a drink then. You should probably get a drink. The, I um, well, I've got to talk well, about our topics. We're going to talk about Elon Musk. He's proposing that we all move to Mars. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about retired astronaut Mark Kelly and his next mission. And China has opened the discussion about who actually owns space now that Donald Trump did the Space Force thing. Right. Uh, we'll also read some emails and I'll eat some candy. And yes. I'm going to go make a drink. Um, do you want yeah. me to cover while well, you're- Well, what are you, um, you know, what are you, what are you drinking? Oh, I, I, what am I drinking? Mm -hmm. you said I'm drinking, drinking uh, red wine. Oh, nice. That's a perfect thing to have today. Well, that's what I thought. And th the only reason, by the way, everyone's wondering at the chat room saying, why aren't you wearing black? Why aren't you wearing black? I'm not what? wearing black because Patricia asked me to wear something Valentine's. Yeah. So this I'm wearing is red. This is the closest red. I can do to Valentine's Day. It's hot as a get out in this thing. I don't even have an undershirt in this thing. It's I'm bacon. Why is it hot? It's thick. Wait, isn't it's it cold hot. where you are right now? Well, in Whibby yeah, Island, I had to open up the Washington. window. It's not. It's not cold in this room. So, but I had to open up the window. So I'm hoping it'll balance out, and I and I don't sweat too much. But we'll we'll see. All right. So, well, you can go make a drink if you want. I'm going to go. Get I'll a do drink. announcements. And you do what you do. And we want to also talk about the question everything conference as well. In fact, I'll open with that. How's that? Yeah, you do that because I I know that uh, Joe Garcia came hot. on get out of here. Strange World get last night. Get out of here. Right. Awkward segue. Go. Do not. Go. Eat my candy while I'm gone. Right. All right. Now that Patricia's gone, we're going to talk a whole bunch of trash about her. Okay. So first off, uh, announcements. The QE 2019 conference, otherwise known as the Question Everything 2019 conference, is happening in Los Angeles a week from tomorrow. That'll be the 22nd and the 23rd. You can pick up tickets, and if you're in the Southern California area, and I know there's people driving in from Arizona, you know who I'm talking about, uh, please, by all means, you know, check it out. Uh, you can go to QE2019.com. Tickets are still available. I will be there. I'll be speaking along with Robbie Davidson, Matt Long, Paul on the Plane, and so on and so on. There's going to be a whole bunch of people there talking about a whole bunch of different topics. It's not just, just Flat Earth, but there are going to be a lot of Flat Earth people there. Uh, and Patricia Steer is also going to be attending. She's not going to be speaking, but that'll be a lot of fun. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just jump up on stage while you're there. Kind of like Kanye West did to, um, what's her name? Really? What's uh, her name? Um, it's, it's Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. <laughs> a goddess among women. 
I, and I forgot her name. Sorry. I remember and Kanye. The queen, and the queen would say that. What's the name of that little blonde? Pixie? No, no, I'm not like that about it. Oh, that. right. Taylor. I love my fellow female friends. In fact, you know whose birthday is um, Val? Oh, by the way, I've got my uh, Patron Exo Cafe, which is a vegan coffee flavored liqueur. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Wow. Mine just melted there. Um, Roxanne Glenn, that's Roxanne what Glenn. I wanted to mention. Her birthday's tomorrow, Valentine's Day, February 14th. So happy birthday to Roxanne. She's 29. And she's such an asset to Flat Earth. She's Aside great. from being incredibly intelligent, um, she's really beautiful and she's very nice. She's super um, involved in doing things. And hey, you know, I can't wait to meet her. Going to be meeting her, her in Amsterdam. Her, and she has questionable lineage. She has absolutely she has no idea what her background is. She really should get take the genetic test, and I know she won't. Mm, she yeah, twenty three and Me or any of those other things. Well, she wants to be uh, remain a mystery, I think, and uh, because people go to her apparently all the time, and they and including me, and it's like, okay, what are you? Where, yeah, where exactly are you from? Because I'm not getting a whole lot of. We're all from the flat earth. That's what we're from. Yeah, That's all that matters. You know, I mean, she could. I have. She could be from uh, Croatia, as far as I know. And actually, we could be related. Exactly, and yeah. she also could be the mother of your Croatian daughter. <laughs> Wait, she'd have to know that if she gave birth to an right, extra child. Right. So, yeah, yeah. For those who don't know what that's all about. Look up previous episodes. <laughs> no, no, you know what? Just ask. Yeah, just yeah. ask. Yeah, gonna, <laughs> just yeah. ask in the chat. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, just also, to clear so it up, Mark doesn't have a Croatian daughter. The and what? Roxanne Glenn doesn't have a Croatian daughter that she doesn't know about. I don't have a Croatian daughter? I don't think you do. Do you? That one night? Really? Is that? Yeah, I was about to say, we're, we're, we're just going to toss that aside. Everything it met really, really going to no. wait. A minute, there's a face on the other side of that thing. Yeah, it's ugly. I thought <laughs> so. You're not going to show not it. showing it. <laughs> Why didn't you just pick off the eyes? I don't or, know. You know, you know what people would probably dangerous. do if they saw you eating it. They probably said, oh, my God. With a, you know, I don't eat. And then I eat one and there's, there's one face. eye left. <laughs> and then so one eye imagery. <laughs> no, seriously, that's a vegan thing. I, I saw it on Scott Pilgrim. It's like I don't eat anything with a face. That's true. People say that. But if you're vegan, you don't eat eggs. They don't have a face. You don't eat cheese. It's no face. I yeah, mean, the chicken had a face. The had a face. Yeah, that's true. This is yeah, true. Yeah. Now that lollipop has a face, although it could be gender fluid. I don't know. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway, the QE2019.com. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, so it's, you, and I, you and I are both flying in next week. It's half male and half female. Look. Oh, my God. No, don't. Don't. Seriously. There's your sound bite that people are just going to use. I, know. I said it. It well, they, they, them, right? It, whatever. So, okay, so you, you and I are well, both by the way, next week. Happy Valentine's Day, oh, yeah, happy, happy birthday, Valentine's Roxanne Day. Glenn. And thanks to all who are here for the secret show. We really are going to be talking about flat earth, we just are having fun at this point with her. I'm drinking red wine, and Patricia's drinking the blood of the innocent. Wow, oh, they weren't that innocent. Oh, <laughs> evil. All right, so also. The uh, if you have, guys haven't checked out the Flat Earth New Zealand Expo is going to be happening at the end of April. I want to so, go to New Zealand. I'm, that's one I haven't planned to go to. I don't have my tickets yet, but hopefully I will soon. But you can check that out at fenzexpo.co.nz. The London conference is at feconvention.com, and Roxanne Glenn and Robin are the ones that are lifting organizing the lid. That. His channel. Yep, lifting the lid. And last but not least, if you ha don't already have it, please pick up the Flat Earth Sun and Moon app by DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. It is NSA approved. That's good to know. What about Metatron approved? Uh, I, I sent the memo, but <laughs> I haven't got anything back. You know Some the whole sort of Metatron scandal of, was it last year? I think. They said it's not collecting enough data, <laughs> so they want to make changes. Anyway, so get it before they update it. They're going to supersize the data collection. Supersize the data collection. Yeah. But by the way, anybody who's ever looked into Metatron and actually really looked, uh, what is that What is that company that doesn't collect data, like people have said, uh, make on the stock market? What's their, oh, it's, what are they it's up to? Not, it's not even a penny stock. Less than a penny. Stock. No, it's like a thousandth of a penny stock. Right. It's a, it's a dead stock. It's a dead it, company. 
It's a dead company. It it's never do been it. a company really doing anything. It's one guy. Yeah. Well, two guys, I guess. But one guy does everything. That second guy's even involved anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, people said about Metatron that they work with Disney. And uh, if you look up Metatron and Disney, you'll find something. Because you'll find something if I look up... Uh, the guy who, Patron yeah, coffee yeah. and lollipops. You'll find if you look up cat and uh, lollipops. I mean, you could find stuff online about anything you put into anyone, a search engine. Look, their resumes are padded. Anyone that works in Hollywood in any capacity exaggerates their resume. They do because everyone wants to be tied to something. It's like, oh, yeah, I was the assistant, second assistant hairdresser that worked on blah, blah, blah for part of the Avengers movie. And the people in the, the two guys that work um, for iMobilize, which is the app company, um, they don't understand Disney the way we do, who are involved in the, um, you know, revelations of, of lies, the right. truth seeking movement. So they don't know. They think it's a good thing. And right. then again, you know, Disney's brought a lot of pleasure to a lot of people over the years. I watched lots of Disney movies as a child. Many of us did. Then, you know, we, we figured out what it was all about. So mm -hmm. I used to pretend I was Cinderella when I was young. And I have a sister who's two years younger than me named Amy. And uh, Amy would, uh, you know, be part of my, uh, my, I don't know, you know, make-believe. So I would dress up in some of my mother's, you know, jewelry and put on a blouse that was sort of long, looked like a dress and like a, a crown. I was Cinderella. And I had her play, ready for it, my dog. <laughs> and then you turned 18 and then you decided playing the queen was much more fun. Yeah. But the thing is, is that I don't remember doing that, but that's what my parents told me. My sister played my dog. That's just wrong. Why didn't they stop me? <laughs> I, I'm not going to comment. I mean, what else could she have been, though? Um, a wicked stepsister? That wouldn't have been very nice. A prince? That would so be making her into a boy. The dog. Yeah, I guess. I don't think she's ever got over that. And you wonder why <laughs> a magic wand has never been issued to you. Yeah, well, you don't think one's been issued to me, but... Oh, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> You've got one. Because I would have seen all, all the catastrophes on the news. Yeah, and some it. might have even happened to you. <laughs> Mini ones. I Yeah, yeah, funny ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're going to leave the conference uh, in Denver. Really? <laughs> Poof! <laughs> and then you make my my plane a stuffed animal. Yeah, good. No. Just a mild fire with a little fixation. <laughs> He's not panicking enough. Oxygen masks not dropping. Damn the door. <laughs> but for everyone else, <laughs> have some kids start screaming. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. Yeah, what else you, what else you we got to do a flat earth show here, I guess. Let me go in the chat. I need to move from the joking around phase to the serious phase. And I'm going to use the chat as a uh, liaison from that and to that. that. A segue? I guess, yeah. Whoa. I'm, I'm having a problem with my computer these Would days. Would you like me to read off the chat? No. I can rattle them off pretty fast. And, and my problem with the computer is, is that my tracking pad isn't scrolling I've got this massive monitor now all right oh, and i gotta tell you while you're while you're doing that mm. uh because jaron and drtrh mentioned it uh they were really excited that j tolan media has been releasing videos in 3d yeah you could use these glasses what <laughs> Wait, no, no, I actually bought real th red and blue, the old style. Not not the cl the clear ones that you get in the movie theaters now, but the red and blue ones back, you know, from the day. I can't remember what the, the official term is for them. And uh, apparently those guys were ranting and raving about it. So I can't remember which one. I think was it Jaron that said it was really, really good? It was Jaron, yeah. Jaron said well, they were really great. So I just ordered some off Amazon because with this particular monitor, because it's new, I really want to see it. This is one of those super wide screens. And I really want to see what J. Tolan stuff looks like. So I'm very excited. I'll give you guys a review once I once I do that. I've uh, reached out to J. Tolan Media and he hasn't responded. But the thing about reaching out to certain content providers these days, YouTube slash Google or whatever it is, has taken away our ability to communicate with people the way we used to have, a way you could email people. Um, and if a person doesn't have their email on their page, if they haven't done that, there's really no way to get a hold of somebody. So I really want to interview him. 
I well, not only do I put my email addresses. So, so content providers out there, if you want to get contacted, please put your put your email address or your contact info in your description box. Yes. Uh, and then I sneak it in other places as well. I put it in the not only in the lower section, but in the about. I'll squeeze it in. I'll put it everywhere. Right. Me too. I've got it in mine. I'm just saying. So you want me to read this, or do you want? To um, read? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I got it. I've figured it out. My trackpad's not working on my computer. Maybe you don't it's have to lie to make friends. New computer. Um, <laughs> so hello to Randy Flat Earth and Manny Pinocchio and Michael Kilpatrick, Darren Wagoner, who says I look most agreeable. <laughs> so I like I like that. Johanna Richmond's hello. Zulu one hi. Zulu says everyone. I'll listen later. I'm at a fire department meeting. Love you guys. <laughs> so hello to Cami. And Ute, Gabe Ramirez is here, who says, hi, Patricia, hope you had a nice birthday. I did, really did. Chris Topher is here, who says, wow, those glasses. <laughs> and uh, Brian Staley says, I totally forgot, because no one loves me uh, about Valentine's Day. Well, you know, it's tomorrow. We're recording this on the 13th. But uh, hello to Jacob Morley and Jointed Apollo. Uh, we've got Gabe Ramirez, I already mentioned him, who says, I'm single, so it's just another day. I'm single, too. But uh, I don't know, you know, someday maybe that might change. I'm definitely taking my time because one other time during my flat earth journey, I didn't take my time. And <laughs> anyway, uh, like we were saying about the Croatian thing, if you don't know about that story, then just ask among each other in the chat. <laughs> chat knows. Know. <laughs> chat knows. Hello to Closet Steve and Space is Fake. And hello, Flat Accord Music, who says Pretty in Pink. Um, scrolling down to Nimnet and hello, Paula Bible Literalist, uh, Recipes Finum, and hello, Martin Leakey. Uh, Martin's talking about St. Valentine's Day and the Valentine's Day Massacre because I mentioned Valentine's Day at the opening of this show, and he says, Yep, a machine gun massacre, too. My favorite, lol. <laughs> um, hello to Bob from Glowbusters. Um, Bob and I are completely opposites. Well, in many ways, I mean, he's a man, I'm a woman, blah, blah, blah. But Bob always starts Globusters on time. And I think I might have started this show on time twice since 2015. Anyway, sorry. Uh, hello to Flat Earth Vegans and uh, scrolling down to Chris Van Maitre. Hi. And Anders Ace, hello. And go for it, Randy. Chocolate Saiyan is here. Chocolate Saiyan, you've got a name that fits with Valentine's Day. And TRIK4064, hello. Hello to Jibby Jedi and scrolling, scrolling past people I've already mentioned. Hello to Skyfly Bry, who sometimes is a little on the dark side, but he's being nice right now. Uh, hello to Don't Cross the Sauce, who says mad love and respect. Uh, hello to Suzette Ann. And Dev Evolved, who says, hello, Patricia, Mark, and everyone. Mojo Shop, Earth is flat and heart-shaped. Happy pre-Valentine's Day. Hi to Ginger Sugarbush. I saw Ginger Sugarbush's name written as Gin Shug Bu. <laughs> and I knew exactly who that person was referring to in a chat yesterday. Hello to Five Arts Liberalis and Chris Everin and Turg Burglar. Ooh. Um, <laughs> usually I skip by those sorts of names. Um, scrolling a little bit to KK Westbury and KK Westbury says, Patricia, my grandmother, Sophie shared your birthday. Happy new year, sister. Happy new year to you as well. And, uh, sorry about your grandmother, but I know she was born on February 5th. So it makes her an Aquarius. So she was probably an interesting person, if nothing else. And, uh, let's see, um, scrolling past names I've already read. See if I can catch a few more other names. Flat Plain, Oregon, who says, I forgot you were an Aquarian, Patricia. Happy belated birthiversary. I like birthiversary. That's cool. Hello to Nathan. Peanuts Clark. Hi. Brian Burton. Hello. Carrie Musgrave. Thomas Harlan. Um, Mr. Maddie Moses. Hello. Um, hello to the Hori Sheet Show. And uh, shout out to Ace McLeod. And Karen B. Jose, excuse me, Jose J.G. Gonzalez, who isn't a flat earther anymore, but he's welcome here because everyone's welcome here, no matter how they see the shape of the earth, as long as they're not a jerk. <laughs> if they're a jerk, they're probably already blocked. 
Hello to Jesus Saves and to Fast Teddy Flat Ted and I Be a Doctor and Nathan Oakley 1980 and D Marble is asking, what did I miss? Not much, D Marble. Nice to have you here. Hello to Paul Curran and Sarcasmic HD in Vegas. Nora Noen's Flower, and they lie about everything, and Blandy McGillicuddy, and boy, lots of new names coming in. And I appreciate everyone being here. Give the video a thumbs up. Every once in a while, I think about removing the thumbs from uh, the videos nah. that I do. But it, people want to vote. People want to vote. Yeah. Remember, I had everything turned off for the first oh, six me months. Too. I, mean, I mean, literally know. everything. No comments, no thumbs, uh, no nothing. I and had... Uh, I, I do want to correct myself before you continue. That's why I'm interrupting. I had um, comments, because I, I said me too. This is what I'm correcting. I had comments on, and then later I turned them all off, and then later I put them back. So I've gone back and forth with it. I, you know. I had 110 videos up, and then uh, Jonathan from Jersey. Yeah, oh, we need he, to talk about him. We probably should. He, uh, he, he, he came to me, he goes, you know what? He goes, look, people like squaring off they they love the back and forth and not necessarily with you but with each other and so i said all right i'll turn them on in fact i made a video saying that i was going to turn them all on and then one afternoon i just went and you went what did you do you braced yourself <laughs> do it yeah and you put yourself point, in the crash safety position like on an airplane i well no i i pretty much said that i wasn't really going to look at the comments because at that point i had done enough years in youtube and enough years in internet forums that i knew what was what was out there you know there's a lot of people that are you know pain pain rolls downhill and they want to oh, yeah. inflict it out there that's Hater, what people do um you know you and i joke around and say haters are going to hate which comes from taylor swift to be honest we mentioned her before i, and I, she I forgot her name i think that's more of a street thing yeah yeah probably. Uh, you know haters gonna hate but she added the hate 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 <laughs> yeah and it's true they they do they are going to hate no matter what like mm -hmm. they're, they're gonna hate that lollipop and you hate for example seriously don't break anything <laughs> get a thing next week i know Question everything conference. Patricia, why are you missing three teeth? Well, <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> Mark punched eating, me. I was eating. Yeah, there you go. Don't make me tell you again, woman. The uh, no. <laughs> Patricia was eating a vegan, uh, a vegan gluten free lollipop. I'm okay with gluten. Bring oh. on the gluten. All right. But the I fact that you went gluten. out and bought what? Why did? It, why does it have to be a vegan? Well, I'm not going to lollipops that aren't that vegan. I mean, when you go, yes. to it's gelatin, which is made of horses' hoofs, cow hoofs, etc. Couldn't you just look through things and, and found something that wasn't? No, most candy that you can buy spur of the moment is not vegan. There's a few things. You don't have to buy an eighty-seven dollar lollipop. <laughs> it's no. not. It's not. <laughs> but yeah, of course it was I do. One hundred thirty. <laughs> and I had to have it overnighted. Oh well, yeah, kind of from Belarus. <laughs> Um, I do want to say hi to a couple of other people that, and then we'll stop saying hi. Hello to Walter Williams and Bin Taken Picks and Rudy Marlski Akit and Chili Rooster and Mike Caps and uh, one other person I saw come in that I didn't say hi to. Mm, mm, Carrie Coons. There was someone else, but it doesn't matter because I'll mention you later. All right. I'm looking forward to the Question Everything conference for sure. Yeah, yeah, it should be yeah. fun. I'm speaking on the second day, and I've written uh, retrospective speech, sort oh, of a combination okay. of State of the Union and how we got here. Because as you know, uh, the Flat Earth Clues are four years old as of three days ago. Wow. I know. That I was my gateway drug into everything. Yeah, apparently it was a lot of people's gateway. I ruined lives. Is. It's a, You were my freshman recruiter. Because after I watched the clues and they were still being put out right. while I was consuming them and I was hoping for more, then I was, you know, browsing around and looking at other people's videos who already had flooded the stuff out yeah. and thinking about things and then obsessing about things and then sleeping and dreaming about things and then waking up. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. I forgot the earth is flat. And that phase we've all been through that, you know, a lot of people have been watching Owen Benjamin go through. Oh, yeah. Yeah, channel. definitely. So um, I wish I wish Owen would mention some of the videos he was watching, but that's all right. I, I don't really care about his endorsement, but I can I can pick it up. I know who's watched my stuff because I can hear the verbiage. You know, I can I 
because I drill it in, I repeat some things, I'm repetitive, I say the same right. things over and over. <laughs> and when I do, because that you know, when people fall asleep with me in their headphones, that's a bad idea, kids. Don't don't ever try that at home. I mean, the things he'll tell you to do. <laughs> Absolutely, hot sex will not say anything like that. Hot sex. So let <laughs> speaking of hot sex, just is <laughs> trying to. And not very sexily. Well, if I lick it, it will be sexual, and that would be creepy. Yeah. And if you're so, very young, it's very Lolita-ish, and if you're 56, it's creeptastic. Well, so I'm biting and it. And you will never ever look 56. Anyone thought? Anyone believe she's 56? Nobody. Nobody's going to believe that in chat. Nobody. Actually, there is a quote-unquote flat earther, and his guy friend, those in the chat will fill you in on who this person is, who came to not one but two of my flat earth mixers where I provided food and drink for everyone free right. here in Houston, Texas. The first time he came and gave his real name. And the second time he, he uh, RSVP'd under the name Deceiver Destroyer. And I you know, said, cool, you can come too. I didn't know who it was. But then I found out when he got there who it was. It's a person who I won't mention because I don't want to give their channel any right. attention. That person said that not only am I not 56 years old, I'm actually in my 20s and a boy. <laughs> and that's weird. That's this a weird, compliment in a weird way. I guess I'll take yeah, it. It's like, okay, would you, you know, take the young part, but at the same time. <laughs> eh, He's got videos on his channel saying that where he actually filmed me at my second mixer that I did. And he's, you know, over six feet. And there I am at like five foot six standing next to him and while he's saying this he's looking down at me right. and it's just dumb so a lot of space stories have been happening as of late there was even oh. one today which I'm, you probably even missed because you were too busy getting ready ordering all these valentine's day things <laughs> well let's hear the story what do you got the story well got? the story that that came out today which made the front page of cnn and nbc was that the mars rover has officially been declared dead after oh, 15 wow. years. Finally. Yeah. Remember, I've been I've been ranting about this one for a couple of years now. It shouldn't have. Okay, let's say it was real. All right. If it was real, it even would have if it died was like, long even ago. if it was sitting next to me, it has a lifespan of about six to seven years tops. And the reason is, even if you could land a thing there, the reason is the battery. Plain and simple which is batteries battery technology has not i mean yeah we've gotten some better batteries but the lifespan of a battery is what it is car batteries for those of you who have not bought a new car every three years once a battery dies you know so car battery it gets discharged and charged over and over and over again right but eventually and it has nothing to do with how many charges it has to do with time eventually that battery has got nothing left and it doesn't matter. You cannot jump it. You cannot recharge it. It is dead. It is like dead, a human. Dead. And they tell you this. It's kind usually of. it's about six years tops. And and I've seen them. I mean, you, anyone that knows anything about cars, I've seen it. I've had cars just die. And you can know because you can, just before it dies, you can you know you just can't start turn turn over the engine. And then one day you go out there and it's just click and that's it. There's nothing left in it. So how did the Mars rover? stay alive for 15 years i know i know i know How, patricia yes you <laughs> redhead in the back well um you know stephen hawking he had als and he lived longer than any other als patient on the face of the earth well the mars rover's battery is made out of the same material that stephen hawking was made out of do i get an a good. gold star for uh, that in the chat room uh <laughs> diva dante says time and temperature on batteries yes Temperature does have a have something to do with it, yes. And cold, you know, heat, 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 hot and cold has something to do with it, but it doesn't extend the life that long. It's not like the old days where we used to put batteries in the freezer to to keep them keep them as fresh as possible. You cannot keep a battery like that going. Remember, this is if this isn't one of those batteries that's used just to start things. This runs the whole rover. Wait a minute. How yeah. cold? How cold do they claim Mars is, or do uh, they claim it's hot? I don't know. I'm just saying these it's scientists not have come up with reasons for not all of that these it would things. Matter anyway, because you'd never be able to transmit data that far with that no. stupid little transmitter. What what data are you transmitting, and where are you broadcasting to, and how are you punching through not just the radiation belts of Mars, if there are any, 
again, if you believe that that's real, but also the Van Allen belts of the earth plus millions of miles. You know what? No, no, no. It's all lies. I don't even believe there's Van Allen radiation belts. Maybe that's another no, I don't think there is saying either. there's a firmament dome container, et cetera. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was a mistake that was made by NASA in 58. That's when they were announced. They've got to keep it up. They got to keep it oh, up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 59, 59. When Van Allen said, oh, yeah, it's super dangerous. Don't go up there. And then right after Kennedy is elected, he says, oh, yeah, we're going to go to the moon. And it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> I can hear Kennedy's accent in my head right now. We choose to go to the moon <laughs> in this decade and do the other thing. And do the other thing. Not, What's that? Not, not because it is women. easy. Marilyn because, Monroe. <laughs> because they are hard. <laughs> because those they're because they're hot. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's what he did. He had a bad back and then he had sex with lots of women. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. John what Kennedy. Else? Um Oh, yeah, so that's that's the story that just came out this afternoon. Interesting. And again, it's one it. of those space. Again, they don't care if you even read the article or even analyze it because or, most of it is just fluff. Or if it's even negative about NASA or space stuff. Oh yeah, no. They all they care about is it if you just glance it because if you even acknowledge it, that means you're acknowledging that we're in space and yes. you're on a globe. Sort of like the the stupid story, and I don't remember who who first talked about it, but it was another flat earther that caught it. Was that um that Elon? Oh, I think it was Globebusters that elon musk's car they ran a little story like could hit earth it's like what do you mean the one that was supposed to go to mars that one what what and then you read down there it's like oh this probably won't happen for millions of years it's like why would you even okay. release the story because... wouldn't it have burned up yeah exactly i mean even, even if it did come back to <laughs> Oh my God! It's just it, but the, there's your perfect space reinforcement story. NASA releases the data. Well, in this case, SpaceX releases the data, and it's one of those interesting little. Oh yeah, it could come back and hit Earth. And then at the very bottom, uh, kind of like when um, you know how the news exaggerates anything. You, the famous Dennis Leary joke, where uh, a dog uh, falls off of a, of a roof and and hits its owner in the head, and the owner dies, and and the headline reads, "Man killed by best friend." <laughs> and I'm laughing and, at that, and, but, yeah. but it's true. It's that's how they run. It's like they. It's like what hi, news has been hyped forever, yeah. and if it so, leads, it leads. So space stories are the latest hype, and we'll get into more of those as we as we go on. Oh, yeah, it's every day. If you look at the mainstream news, which I don't, but I happen to catch things here and there. Right. It's going to be a space story a day for sure. It is. It is now. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you mentioned Elon. Now, Elon uh, in uh, Newsweek, uh, no, excuse me, CNBC.com right. has said that uh, moving to Mars is the thing. Moving to Mars will not cost us right. much. He says he's confident and that's what he wants to do. Yeah, that is his. But that he, is you his know, and you could even list off all the things Elon Musk has promised, but yet never delivered. Not in alphabetical order. Here it goes. And I'm not even reading anything. I'm just going off of Wait, memory because this, this sounds like a movie to me. I need to get my movie candy. It ticks me off so much. Okay. He said he was going to solve Puerto Rico's power problems after the hurricane with his portable generators. He said he was going to rescue those kids in that mine with his portable submarine. Mm. He said he was going to do um, an underground rail system that was going to go from Los Angeles to San Francisco, a bullet train underground. Oh, I don't know. How about the super plane that was going to go from the United States to China for the price of, of a business class ticket? And, of course, one of my favorites, which is that he said he was going to send two tourists around the moon and back in 2018. It is now 2019. He announced it in 2017, none of which he accomplished to where the New York Post ran a headline last year. And you guys can look this up right now. And the headline simply reads, Elon Musk is a total fraud. Yes. And, and that's what they said. They just let rattle it off. They're going, why is everyone listening to this guy? He's never delivered on anything he's ever, 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 sorry. One more time, ever done, ever. So well, when he says, oh yeah, going to Mars, like, what are you talking about? You've never even sent a person up. 
my voice is starting to escalate here. It's, it's getting so bad. <laughs> it's true though. He he's never he sent, sent a I'm, mannequin up. <laughs> he's never. He's yeah. Oh, I'm in sorry. a car with the rear view mirror taken off it, so that when they did all the fakery, no. the mirror wouldn't reflect the truth that they no. were in a studio somewhere. Yeah. Don't get me started on the Tesla Roadster. We all know how bad that was, and they have had help. I mean, I love the fact that Jaron found out immediately that when the booster rockets came down, they actually edited live footage after the fact when it got into YouTube. Yeah. We pointed out the flaws in that rocket footage and they fixed it. They fixed it in the mix as they, they said. They fixed it in the mix. They fixed it in the mix. It's like, what are you talking about? You can't edit videos. I mean, that. I'd love to go back and edit some of the things and certain relationship I had on YouTube. Just go in and delete that stuff but leave the entire videos intact just to yeah, yeah. and it's like what because we're not going to download this stuff immediately before you do that it's like well you know if anyone else watches it yeah no uh, anyway so yeah elon musk is one of the yeah don't ever every time he comes on to talk about anything it just cringeworthy persona non grata you know his middle name is reeve like christopher reeve elon Elon Reeve Musk. Yeah, exactly. Born in the seventies. Um, and he's uh, South Africa. South Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, they say he is the founder and lead designer at SpaceX and the product architect of Tesla, uh, and of course the uh, co-founder CEO of Neuralink. We've heard stories about that. But his association with Tesla is a little different than if you look it up on Wikipedia, as you do know, Mark. Yeah, he did not, and and I feel bad for um. And I, in fact, I had this discussion. Anyone with, who dates him, oh wait, go ahead. Well, no, no, no. I feel bad for not the millennials because we're now into Generation Z. So you and I are Generation X. Um, uh, you know, I'm borderline stuff. baby boomer. I think I've read. Mm, no, no, no. Well, I, sixty. Sorry, sorry, sixty. Yeah. What? Sixty three. Ooh. I might be the very last, but I'm kind of, you know, whatever. All right. So I am Generation X. There's Millennials and then there's Generation Z. And they don't have a name for Generation Z yet because they're probably going to be the last generation because the world is So gonna end. that's it? <laughs> yeah, that's what pretty about, much. Uh, I, you Dr. know, that's Snow. actually pretty appropriate. Generation Z. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you like do after World that? World War Z, the movie. Yeah, World Brad War Z. Pitt. So, well, I do have to mention that Dr. Zach changed his name to Decimal Z instead of Dr. Zach because he's not a doctor. It was just sort right. of a pet name. So, so, okay. So here's the deal. So I don't care what you read about. It. The reason why I mentioned the, the millennials and Generation Z is you could ask kids on the street right now. It's like, who invented Tesla motors? And they'll say, oh, it's Elon Musk. It's like, no, no, he did not. And, but it's an honest mistake. And the reason they say that is because people have short memories. And that is history is written by the winners or the last people, you know, that own the company. Uh, Ray Kroc didn't found McDonald's. All he did was franchise it. Mark Cuban didn't create the Dallas Mavericks. He just made a lot of money in the dot coms and bought them. But everyone associated it's Mark Cuban with the freaking Dallas Mavericks. And of course, yes, Elon Musk is tied to SpaceX. No question. But he did not found them. He bought them. Where did he get the money? Well, he, I will say this, I will give him this. He was a software developer, if you believe the story, and I kind of do, uh, because software developers do tend to fall back ass where it is into money. And that is he helped invent PayPal. And when PayPal went public, he had like a 12% stake in it, something like that, which is ridiculous. I mean, that 12% in PayPal, it was it's billions. You know, and PayPal just gotten bigger and bigger. That's how everyone transfers money nowadays. I mean, the banks were behind him and it turned into a really, really big thing. So Elon Musk does not have anything to do with Tesla other than he owns it. And he gets to point people around and say, oh, we should do this and should do that. But he wasn't smart enough even to send, uh, if you're going to fake uh, something going up into space, he should have faked the freaking flagship. That's what bothered me more than just about anything. It was like, why would you send up a convertible? Send up the four seater, the, the Model S. The thing that's out on the roads more than anything else, the big sedan, because with four seats, you can sell the four seats, right? And you can get massive endorsements. Yeah, this you said would... that getting uh, different characters from oh my god, instead of, mannequins. Instead of just eating. generic mannequin, you could have Boba Fett, Iron Man, Groot, and a stormtrooper. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Disney's paid for the whole thing. That's it. And they would pay top dollar for that sort of advertising absolutely would pay top dollar but you can't do that because you would have to let disney in to the circle and you're not you're not going to do that he I, can you imagine how many car companies all the car companies i'm sure called him after the fact and says what's it going to take to get a chevy truck into space and he's like sorry we're not doing that anymore 
Or, fact, sorry, <laughs> sorry, we can't do that ever. No, the government <laughs> stepped in and said, oh, there's some sort of security breach that you're not supposed to beam back transmissions from that sort of altitude. You know, there's some sort of national security thing, uh, which meant that basically they saw the social media and yeah. social media said- Whenever no they reason. say it's a secu national security matter, it just means something completely other than that. Exactly. For sure. Um, you know, Elon Musk has a sister. Her name is Tosca Mux, excuse me, Tosca Musk. She's a filmmaker, believe it or not. And she's produced various movies. She is the founder of Musk Entertainment. And if you think about that, having a sister as a filmmaker, I mean, that is somebody that you can tap to get information on how to make, uh, oh, let's just say the uh, Tesla car in space film. Right. You know? Right. Um, this is an interesting thing about him. In 2008, he started dating an English actress named Tallulah Riley, and they married in 2012. And they ended their four-year relationship with a, uh, a tweet. He tweeted her. It was an amazing four years. I will love you forever. You will make someone very happy one day. Wow. That's a nice way to end a relationship. Just tweet somebody. So sad. <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's the world we live in, unfortunately. Aren't you glad you grew up, though, when you did? I am. However, anybody in any decade will say the same. I know my no. parents were saying that, you know, when they, my mother told me the 50s was very boring. Um, you know, so she married my dad in the late 50s. She said the 50s were incredibly boring, unlike that TV show that was popular when I was in high school and junior high called Happy Days that showed the 50s as, you know, with the Fonzarelli and, you know, very um, pastel colored and really fun and saddle shoes and, 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 and dancing. My mother said it was incredibly almost a black and white decade, uh, boring as can be. I think everyone thinks when they grew up, for the most part, was better slash more wholesome. And they always think that future generations don't have as much good music or good food or good prices or good economy or the air quality is, is worse. But I am glad that I grew up in the 70s and 80s, for sure. Yeah, I'm a little more objective. I, I see pluses and minuses in every decade, except yeah. for this one. Uh, the millennial, well, again, the millennials have, uh, you, you've seen, probably seen the seminars that have been out there and that they, they've been dealt a bad hand. They, they, if they're going to have fun, they're starting in a hole, you know, and most of that comes from the student debt. You know, you, you've got kids now, you know, when you and I were, were out there, you could, you could go to university on couch cushion money. And nowadays you got kids that, I mean, they're coming out of state college with six figures in debt. And that, that just, I mean, I can't even imagine being 21, 22 and being a hundred thousand in debt be like, Oh, I mean, that would weigh on you. I mean, when you're 22, you should be having fun. You should be going to Europe if yeah, you're exactly. American anyway. Well, also millennials have, um, a lot of, okay. There's the uh, social justice warrior aspect of being a millennial. Uh, there's the word triggered. Everyone that's a millennial gets, quote, triggered all of the time by different things. Hashtag and, everything's uh, offensive. Yeah, exactly. Um, people do say that the millennials are the smartest, most educated generation ever. But like you said, they've got that, they've got that debt. And even if they're smart, according to a survey, 40% of millennials are unemployed. Now they're young. Yeah, it's, they it's, don't get a job, but well, that's just it. If you the, it's not like remember when the eighties where everything was upper, upwardly mobile. You know the whole term yuppies and guppies mm -hmm. and and dinks. Remember what well, you know what dinks is? Double income. Double income. No kids. Not. No kids. No kids. Double there you go. No kids. kids. Good <laughs> answer. Good answer. The, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, but now, yeah, when you're coming out, I mean, when you're coming out with a six figure debt and you're working as a barista part time, right. That is going to take a while. That's well, an uphill, it's an uphill climb. 18 and 34, that age range, um, they are earning less today than the same age group did yeah. in the past. Yeah, there's a, in fact, I, uh, what's the, something they, the choice, not to dwell on this, but I, I got to mention it. Something Let's that dwell. They, a choice, no, a choice that they have nowadays that nobody else had before, which was they have to choose between owning a home and having a kid. You can't have both. If they must have done this on purpose to reduce population. I mean, Ooh, interesting. think about it. Uh, everything maybe. is everything that is happening with our society has been handcrafted by the powers that should not be. Right. For sure. Uh, another thing is depression among millennials. They are reporting the highest level of stress and depression than any other generation. Sure. Of the same age. I could see that. 
since, of course, these sorts of studies have come out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of millennials also live at home. And in some way, that's kind of nice because a long, long time ago, people used to live with their parents until they got married. And there is something nice about living with your family and taking care of your family and your family taking care of you as opposed to, you know, the minute but, you're 18, 19, you know, splitting the scene, which is what I did. I moved Yeah, on. well, I mean, just about everybody you think of did. And it's like, yeah, well, you know the cliche, I can't wait to get out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Screw you, dad. Yeah, and then later you realize, wow, mom and dad always provided a beautiful home and great food, three meals a day, everything was paid for, and now I'm sleeping on the floor and I'm <laughs> A studio apartment with five other people. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> that's, that's called a flop house, Patricia. <laughs> I'm not saying that happened to me. But <laughs> was, were you doing heroin? Were you doing the crank? All yeah. right. No, the glass. It was the glass. The glass. For those of you who don't remember that story, just ask among each other in the chat. Yeah, so ask them out how the only real death threat that Patricia and I had, which was retracted and then apologized publicly for. I got an apology via email the other day, which was really interesting. I think I'm going to read it, but I won't read the person's name who sent it to me because that would be rude. Mm. Uh, let's see if I still have it here. I might not. Um, anyway, I'll see if I can find it. I'll look and look you through my to, emails. Uh, want me to cover while you're looking? No, you've got it. I actually, I don't actually. Well, send yeah, but I'm not going to look it up. Oh, here it is. I got it. I got it. Okay. okay, here it is. I won't say who it's from. I got this apology. This is a humble attempt to absolve the guilt weighing in my gut. Some time ago, a year, maybe two, I wrote something on your comment section of your channel. It was unkind, coming from a mind still scrambling to heal from an overdose of drugs and alcohol. I'm asking for your grace and forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. Any reply from you will be a blessing to my heart. Thank you for considering this plea, signed so-and-so. Of course, I wrote back and, and told this person, of course, I mean, People write crazy stuff all the time, and I hope you're doing well health wise. Thank you for writing. But it was kind of a Valentine from an ex hater when you think about it that way. It happens every once in a while. I mean, you know me, I've gotten apologies from people that lashed out against me initially. Oh, me too. I've got a few. Yeah. And we you know, the only apology. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, they would lash out, I would send sweep teams. And then uh, several weeks later, when they got out of the hospital, pff, amazing. <laughs> Some sort of apology. It was great. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the only people who never apologize are the ones who, when you first started talking about Flat Earth, made fun of you, belittled you, argued with you, uh, deleted you from social media, blocked you, right. uh, and of course told many other people that you were crazy, nuts, and insane, and to stay away while you were trying to tell them about flat earth those people you find them you find them out there they're now flat earthers talking about it all the time which is great but they'll never apologize to you and many of us have experienced that same thing yeah. and, the, and it doesn't matter i mean it doesn't you know they're they're part of the team at that point but sure. it irritates me it irks you <laughs> they have this weird memory gap exactly where it's like oh yeah Oh yeah, I know I've got six or six or eight videos against you on my channel. Nah, I'm not, I'm not gonna take them down. And it's not that, that they hate you. It's like they just—it's not even part of them anymore. It's like it's still on your channel. I don't even bother asking them because they're never gonna take them down. There is one person that I won't mention them who made pretty bad video against you and I—a very big channel—and they made a couple bad videos against us, and they have removed them from their channel without any apology to us, without any commotion without any noise they took That's down good. those videos and you know sometimes it's not an apology that really matters it's what they've decided to do now that they've realized they were wrong right so should we um uh, there's a couple of videos i wanted to ask you your opinions on please they, i hope they, i've they, watched they, them you you obviously watched the current number one video on youtube uh, when it comes to flat earth which is flat earth rising by the guardian mm -hmm, yes and it wasn't too bad i've got some thoughts about it it's a it's just like this lollipop it's a 50 50 kind of thing with two different colors here and here's what i think okay on the surface kind of like behind the curve you watch it it's enjoyable it's very well done it's pretty yeah but then later you sleep on it or you take a shower it's where i do my best thinking by the way here's some echo and sorry, I'm still caught with you in the shower. Hang on. <laughs> 
Okay. And then you nope, still there. You start burning with anger. So the Guardian article was great. I think so many people that were in the article did really well. I mean, they presented their thoughts about Flat Earth perfectly. However, the Guardian probably talked to them like the people in Behind the Curve talked to me, for example, hours on end. But they took out pieces of it, just like they did with the Guardian, with the interviews they did with the people they talked to and took out the parts to weave a narrative that they had in mind from the beginning. And with the Guardian piece, the narrative was, flat earthers have mental problems. They took the part off about, about Dave Murphy and, and his background, and also Roxanne Glenn and her background of domestic abuse, and made it as if there's something wrong with her on a very subtle way because of domestic abuse. And we all know that that's not the fault of the person getting beat. So that, that was pretty disgusting. So that's my thoughts on the Guardian piece. I don't know. What does the live chat think? What do you think, Mark? Uh, well, I'd love to hear what the live chat think. But I knew that the, the British people that were involved, and of course, Bob, uh, being the American on this side, um, they thought they were represented pretty well. Uh, it was it was fair. Let's put it this way. Compared to, for example, the one that's two slots down from it, the National Geographic piece, which came out uh, four weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, which was an obvious hit piece. But again, again, that was National Geographic. Oh, yeah. the, produ the producers of From the Guardian, I thought, considering the temperature of that particular newspaper and or website uh, was fair because there were other Guardian people that were coming after us with knives. And James Bullock, who, who was the producer, the field producer for this, who came over, he said early on, he, you know, he contacted me and said, look, we want to do something that is that wants to focus on the people. And we think you've been treated unfairly in a lot of different places. And yeah, well, I thought for the most part, yeah, of course, you know, some of it has to do with the editing. And I don't know how much control he had over the final product because, you know, maybe he had to send it back to the, the main office in London and they had to come up with something. But it, it, look, I enjoyed it more than most. And, and yeah. the ratings, what are the ratings right now? I mean, I gave it a thumbs up because I want to support Flat Earth. And I think all the people that were involved in talking to The Guardian had the best intentions at heart, kind of like behind the curve. But what people do with film once they get it, when they want to spin a narrative is beyond, uh, <laughs> beyond our uh, scope. We have no control. We right. don't get to see, like, behind the curve. We didn't get to see what they were going to, put out before they put it out. We had no yay or nay, thumbs up or thumbs down. The one paragraph summary uh, that they did, uh, though not a new phenomenon, th uh, Flat Earth Theory has enjoyed a huge resurgence. Wow. Resurgence. It's not a theory. Recently, a YouGov poll indicated that a third of Americans age 18 to 24 were unsure of the shape of our planet in spite of scientific proofs from Pythagoras to NASA. Why has this happened now, and what does it tell us about society today? That part. What does it tell us about society today? As Walter Williams in the live chat says, they're fitting us for rubber rooms. And Rodrigo Ferrari Nunez, also in our live chat, says he's going to dispute the Guardian's piece. And his, his viewpoint and mine pretty much are the same. Uh, he's going to make a, a video summarizing the points, as he has done with Behind the Curve. So, um, again... I I mean, is, all press is good press. Okay. Gotcha. Well, yeah. I mean, or, you remember yeah. that people are taught. In fact, the, the what's interesting in the top five things here that, you know, I, ch I put the filter, but in the top five, there were two that stuck out that were really unusual. You want to know where, and I don't know if you caught this, but the two things that, that Flat Earth has really done recently, um, other than just huge membership, just keeps increasing and increasing, is we're going into areas that we shouldn't be. And they're cover people are covering it because they know it's such a weird and interesting topic. For example, the first one would be um, Cake House. Oh, right. When I caught this, this really stuck out to me because I'm going, wait a minute. And I look at him and it is, it is a chef, a guy who specializes, wait for it, in cakes. That's all he does is bake stuff, right? And he interviews other chefs. So he interviews chefs in this case. This guy's name is Ralph. He has red hair and he has a weird hat says the guy with a cool hat and this guy he asked him 20 questions and out of those 20 questions there is one flat earth question it's towards the end he only spends maybe six eight seconds on it but what is he used for the title of his video cake boss ralph destroys flat earth theory 20 questions 
Wow. And there's your hype right there. It's like, okay, one, this this channel shouldn't even, it's got a hundred, what, 150,000 subs? Shouldn't even be touching this thing. It has nothing to do, Flat Earth has nothing to do with baking Wait, in America. It does. It does. Those who have followed Globusters since their inception might remember, and I know Nathan Oakley will remember, and some others in the chat, including probably Bob of Globusters, that for a while we used to put in the live chat, cake, donuts, pastries. It was just a thing that everyone would write and put emojis of it in the Globusters live chat. So in some weird way, for we, those who have a long activated, enough memory. We activated some <laughs> yes. synchronicity. And so this guy yes. was drawn to us, Cake House. Yes. I, I never even knew this channel existed. Uh, like, And the other channel was Tony Fisher, which is weird because he really should be called Puzzle Master, but as you know, Puzzle Master was taken by one of our own. Yeah, you know, the, love the him. Guy that goes, I've interviewed him. <laughs> yeah, the guy that goes, wah, wah. <laughs> Puzzle. He's, a, he's into astrology. He's a really cool guy. Check out yeah. the interview with Puzzle Master. It's on my channel. But Tony Fisher, all he does is three-dimensional puzzles, like Rubik's Cubes and variations of Rubik's Cubes, hand puzzles, like the kind from uh, Hellraiser, if you remember that movie. Oh, gosh, I had an ex-boyfriend who made me watch all the Hellraisers that were available at the time. Pin face or pin cushion face? Uh, pin, pinhead. Pinhead. What, you what, uh, and you dated him long enough to actually watch all three? Yeah. It was, it was well, actually, they're year. up to more than three now. But yeah. He owned several restaurants in the Napa Valley. So wow. I ate And he was I a Hellraiser fan? Did he like, listen <laughs> to death metal, too? No, he didn't. He listened to 90s pop music. You know what? I shouldn't. I shouldn't give him too hard of a time because Hellraiser came out in the eighties, mm. when it the late eighties, if I'm not mistaken. And the first one was kind of like a harder version of Freddy Krueger. That's really yeah. what it was. So anyway, so get back to this. So Tony Fisher, that's all he does is freaking puzzle boxes, and he made up a special globe puzzle box that he that he solved once he had it mixed up. You know, with the continents in the wrong right, places. Right, right, right. And what does he do for the title? He says, Flat Earth Puzzle Finally Solved, 100% Proof, Flat Earthers in Turmoil. There is then <laughs> no reason, no reason, yeah, there's a reason because for him to be doing a Flat Earth video. But, but you people, just put it in the title of the video and people will click. Exactly. Yes, people are all of a sudden, whoever is doing, there's a lot of smart guys out there, stat nuts like me, and they're looking through the metrics and Flat Earth even though the scoreboard is gone, you know, the official scoreboard is gone, you can check out in different metrics where this thing is showing up. And so now we've got channels, forget about conspiracy channels and news channels and space channels. Oh, we got to talk about the space one here in a second. Mm. Now we've got channels that l couldn't be farther from flat earth. There's yeah. makeup channels that do, you know, makeup reviews and yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for that. tutorials. Oh no, they've put it in their um, keywords. And so when you, put flat earth in and if you scroll all the way to the last you'll see a few makeup channels i mean not i mean about of course, in your video but they've put it as a keyword because they so our demographic we've hit we've hit so many of the notes we've hit you know sports and entertainment uh just about everything conspiracy we you know government <laughs> hey look, one thing we haven't had a you know a murderer say he was a flat earther and they or they haven't framed us by saying a murderer was a flat earther i mean we no, got lucky. and again we've lucky. been really lucky in those regards everyone remembers the boat issue with jaron back Aaron's in the day boat. <laughs> you know and we should do like revisionist history i should start making up stuff for that remember jaron oh, yeah, that, that, remember? Boat? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that boat that blew up oh my god so many children anyway so the other thing that I want to mention was and you didn't like this video either, but I had to I have to bring it up. Oh yeah. Which is the space. I sent it to you. Yeah, you it's, did. And then I'll, I'll find it. You talk about it and I'll find it. It's uh, it's flatter thing. Away. This okay, it's called The Earth is Not Flat. Why believe otherwise? Flat Earth Psychology with the makers of the Flat Earth documentary. Right. The guy in who's a space guy. A yeah, space guy. Big space he, a young guy. He interviewed the three people who are responsible for Behind the Curve. Yeah, Daniel Clark, Nick Andert, and Caroline Clark. Mm -hmm. And he, they were all together. It was amazing. I was going, what the heck? And you got all these three on a couch, and you did a Skype call and recorded it. And a bomb didn't blow up? And, and, and earth planted? Oh, come on. <laughs> that I planted? It, Wait. it, it, it no, gave no. us a, a huge amount of, look, you that video wouldn't even have been made. Not if, that many people have actually seen that film. I don't think. Uh, I think some people have seen it. It's going to take a while, though. Remember, it was only re officially released in November. 
Has anyone ever said to you, hey, I saw you, I recognize you, you were in behind the car, ever happened? Well, we'll, we'll find out soon enough because I'm going to be going to the airport for the first time. In, uh, well, uh, you've been recognized as Mark Sargent in the airport. I, yeah, I, I have been, so we'll see. None we'll of that's see. ever but there, happened. But there, no, I've had people call me because of the... Um, uh, but I mean, you have a big channel. Why would I think my channel would, would have that no, happen? No, I just... Anyway, he interviewed them and he was, it struck me as he really was curious. You could tell, and here was, here was the part I liked, and I know you didn't really see it as much, which is he had the same sort of reaction that other people did in the audiences that I was with that watched that film, which was, he's a big space believer and he saw this film. And he's like, wait, you know, again, this is a thing. And, you know, he did not take it. He didn't blow it off. He didn't be like, oh, these guys are just crazy. He's going, wait, this is it's very similar to the reason why The Guardian ran their story and National Geographic ran their story. Now, they ran it off of the U.gov survey. And don't sell the U.gov survey short, people, whoever's listening out there. That thing triggered a lot of science people because it was a science research study done by u.gov over in britain who they talked to ten thousand americans and everything seemed to be what they thought you know uh, you know single digits for most people but then when they got to the 18 to 24 it was in the mid 30s mid 30 percentile they were saying yeah we don't believe in the globe and this freaked out a lot of science people because that's if you know anything about deviations that is way out there there's no way that number should be that high and that would be millennials and generation well a combination of millennials and generation z well the guy who did the video that we're speaking of looks like he's a millennial yeah so. oh if not in generation z yeah right yeah he's probably millennial though probably on the tail tail end of right, right but yeah i thought it was interesting and i'm again those stories will just generate more stories you know it's true i don't like the way behind the curve took all of those involved um interviews that we gave them we all let them into our lives and made it into a, I wouldn't say a hit piece because they, they just showed their opinion, you know, different right. than a hit piece. Um, they selected what they wanted to put and they didn't put words in our mouth. But anyway, you know, we, we all know who's seen it. I didn't like that part about it. But in the end, no one's really going to remember it, but they will remember flat earth is a thing. Yeah. Well, and it's a good reference point. It's out there now. Now it's again, like a bookmark that people can, can go to. And it's like, Oh yeah. Was there ever anything made along these lines? It's on IMDB. It shows up in search engines. And again, 22, I learned so much about the film festival industry going through this 22 film festivals in seven countries. That is not shabby yes. Yes. for something like that. And the part that I loved more than anything was when you and I listened to the director's commentary. Yes, where Nick and um, Daniel and Caroline were all sitting, you know, and they recorded. If you guys don't know, if you listen to it on iTunes, you can listen to the director's commentary, and they were all talking about it. And there's deleted scenes too. We watched. And all there's all some together. deleted scenes on top of. It. There's a deleted scene with Jaron, one with me. We just watched this the other day. I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, yeah. I I I remembered it, but nobody. I hadn't run into anybody that had had gotten it yet because it's it was only on iTunes. Oh yeah, by the way, um, it's on Netflix tomorrow oh really no yeah, see so that's finally it gets good. to netflix that's not good well whatever kind of a big deal you know what i hate it is what it is i hate that expression but well it is, what it is but but here's the part that here's the part that i liked which was we were so close remember it all comes down to the editing and we were so close to a better edit but it was and out of all everything i listened to when they were talking about it the part where he said that when the what was it that kid was 11 or 12 the 12 year old kid came up to the microphone mm -hmm. and I was talking to him when he and I were having a dialogue. That's when he knew that they had to make some sort of position. Right. So that's when the people that made that film, after they went to the first Flat Earth conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, right. we didn't know those of us who had been being filmed. They decided to take it from a sort of neutral piece about a community into a yeah, it like turn bend it a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was because they all they they all of a sudden it, for them it went beyond the pale, which was okay. This is this is going this may be for them it was going a little too far. The children will be the, the, again the, the same lines. Yeah, think of the children. And that is okay, there are younger people here that are being influenced about this. What are the ramifications going down the road? 
And so that's when they had to, they, they felt it was their obligation to turn it in a certain direction. I get that, but oh yeah, thank cool you guys, thank you, um, you know, world police. No, yeah. yeah, that's what they did with the um, Caroline did with a documentary on Sandy Hook, was she was the world police on that, and pretty much saying that thing was exactly what the media has told us, and if you say really? otherwise, there's something wrong with you. You want me to? And, and but I, I didn't know that that woman who was involved in behind the curve was a person who was involved in a anti, uh, anti Sandy Hook truth documentary. I didn't. None of us I knew that. I didn't either. But I learned was, a lot. If but ever since she was so to be in something again, I like want the bio of every single person involved in the film, and I want like references. <laughs> Well, again, you can only take it so far because, I know, I know. If, you know, when it comes to documentaries, remember, it's not like a major, a major motion picture where agents and actors have to sign off and or they have the power to sign off before the film is released. Hmm. With documentaries, usually you have to sign off before you even do day one. Otherwise, they're like, yeah, we'll go to somebody else. Right. Uh, when it comes yeah. to Caroline, though, I, and again, I'm, I'm not going to slam her too much because when she did the Sandy Hook thing, she was so freaking young. She had to have been like 20. And she did it with other people too. And but she did it with other people. But in the, in the film we're talking about, in the, excuse me, not film, in the uh, video that we're discussing that's on YouTube now, she does mention the Sandy Hook thing. And currently she, today, she, she still does. believes Sandy Hook is real children died. It was real. So. And I wish I could have spoken with her. And I spent a weekend with those guys down at the eclipse. You but know, we didn't Dan, know that they, Daniel, I, I didn't know. And honestly, I mean, she and I, I mean, she's way more than young enough to be my daughter. She's nice. They're all she, nice. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not slamming her. I, what I would have told her though, is what I tell everybody when it comes to Sandy hook, I can break it down in 60 seconds. Here it is. The reason why Sandy hook went so sideways and why people are so suspicious the easiest way to tell people is like and and you and i have talked about this before and it's like look i will give the first person that emails me right now a thousand dollars cash money i will not hesitate i will paypal it to you you show me a 10 second video clip of a single child being carried out of that school 10 second video clip not the three still shots that were taken by an unknown reporter with the kids touching each other's backs because that would have realistically happened no and the reason why you will never ever see it is because it didn't happen. Just and like uh, Brian Stavely is always saying on his channel. I don't agree with everything Brian Stavely says, by the way, about Mandela and all this, but I think he's a great guy and a, and a good researcher on many things. I know he's a flat earther. Uh, Brian always says that there's no photos of people running out of the Twin Towers after the first quote unquote plane uh, hit. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the problem with any, with anything you're trying to fake you, the devil's in the details and the biggest problem they have, and you'll understand this is the traffic copters, which was, this was first thing in the morning, traffic copters, as you know, full tank of gas, they're bored. They got nothing better to do. And remember that because they're up there, they can, they can bypass traffic. They were there instantly, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The, the copters were there just hovering and hovering and hovering and hovering. No one was coming out of the school. And it's like, and it was like, it was like they were hovering around. It was like, it was over 600 kids, you know, a thousand parents and all that law enforcement, it would have been pandemonium for hours and hours and hours and hours. And it, and the, by the time they got there, it was like, it had already been done. And it was like only eight 30 in the morning and there was and no kids. You try to evacuate 600 kids out of any building. It would have taken them a long, long time. Just imagine, I mean, you and I don't have children. Um, like if we did, oh, well, you know, we have. You know, we have our Croatian daughter. That's another story. Of course, yes. Ask among yourselves in the chat if you want to know more. Yeah. Um, if we did, let's say you and I had a son, yeah. and their son went to Sandy Hook, and that event happened on that day, and you heard about it, and you cell phone messaged me, and I'm like, oh my, we would drive there as fast as could be. Yep. You and I would be, <laughs> you'd have to shoot us and kill us to stop us from getting yeah. inside that school. Yeah, yeah. We the, would be get, climbing we're fences, talking, smashing police in the head with, with you know, our fists. We would not be stopped. Even if you round down to uh, 600 kids, we'll round down to 1,000 parents. That's 1,000 cars descending on that firehouse. Remember, that road is a, you know, it's a one road thing. A 1,000 car traffic jam would have been lined up for several miles in each either direction, and the parents would have gotten, they would have parked their cars immediately. They wouldn't have waited for the traffic jam to clear. They would have been running. 
you would have had this barricade that would, it would have been set up and none of that it would be a siege like in the old days on a castle none, none of would, this uh, and we're talking yeah. we're talking grade school kids none of that was visible anywhere not only that it was the anti version of that not only was there no traffic jam none of the the um, emergency response vehicles even had their lights on none of them i mean they're all the car all the police cars were parked in neatly in the slots it's like are you kidding it would have been everywhere they the cops would have been i mean there were there were tarps the tarps were laid out in case they had to bring out bodies and it's like nobody came out of the school so i'm sorry let me reiterate thousand dollars to anyone that can show me a single 10 second clip of a kid being carried out of that school no why not don't tell me it's because well they didn't get there in time no the traffic op copters got there in within minutes and it was over and, and, and it's like all they have to do is tell you oh yeah it happened oh these kids died it's very sad gun rights and also you know the the children were left in the school overnight or something the bodies of all the children that were killed i mean literally the person that supposedly did that shooting was a small thin person and they actually scored a 100 out of 100 rating on sh on the shooting of each person that they aimed their firearm at oh yeah the perfect the perfect kill ratio never has happened you since, know it's since impossible it, yeah. it's impossible and that is it, sorry two more points i, I got to get these out there uh the perfect kill ratio which is as you know in war or in any armed conflict or any shooting there's always killed and then there's wounded mm -hmm. you never kill as many as you wound because people are terrible shots guns aren't exactly the most accurate things in the world and apparently this kid went in there squeezed off 150 rounds and nobody was wounded everybody that was touched with a bullet was dead you get hit in the finger dead hit in the foot dead ricochet <laughs> off of three different things and grazes your ear duck gone you're dead and that has never ever happened and the one kid that supposedly went to the hospital died in the hospital and I was like no 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 but the other one you guys can look this up this is on youtube right now you can type this in any time uh, it's anytime hard to find any sandy stuff on youtube no no no. Type, no you can you can still find it all you have to do it won't be sandy hook type in robbie parker laughing oh Remember, of course. that was the father of one of the kids one of the six-year-olds and he went on cnn 24 hours later and did a press mm -hmm. conference the problem was is that robbie people say oh no there's no such thing as crisis actors oh yeah watch this cnn didn't tell him there was a it was a live feed they he thought that he was going to walk up to the podium and they were going to go like this and be like oh okay and so he's laughing smiling he's you know off can you know away from the podium then they motion him to the podium he gets up there and then he starts going through his method it's like okay so sad <sighs> okay <laughs> my name's robbie parker and was <laughs> it's like you you were just yucking it up with your buddies over there and and they never ran that clip again but of course you know everything on the internet sticks we got it don't tell that one man one guy almost blew the entire thing and that was 24 hours after it. but it didn't blow the entire thing nor did any of the other things that that people um have brought to light like um the alleged death records have all been sealed and um you mentioned that about robbie parker but even during the so-called um aftermath of the event they right. had this sign up that said everyone must check in i mean oh yeah 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 that's nothing that you would have uh, you know, and, and also raised by gypsies, Mark, who's in our uh, in our live chat. Let me just scra scrolled by what he wrote. Oh, he said that you know after the bodies, you know, of the children were, you know, were, everyone was accounted for as being dead. The parents didn't get to see their dead child; they just got to see a picture of their child. And raised by gypsies, Mark says, "Just a picture was good to tell me my child was killed." Right. Right. Yeah. It was. It was. It was amazing the the things that were involved, uh, the lack of, of um, comprehensive data that was coming out of there. Everybody, again, just took the media's word for it. Of course, because of children. And, and check this out. In our live chats, a person I've not seen before, I don't think, Justin Bronk. Justin writes this. There was a threat of a shooting at my stepdaughter's school. I was in a traffic jam. I parked my truck and ran to the school and got my stepdaughter out and home safely. That's what a real parent does with a real child. Right. Right. It's not. And, and I, I don't want to get into a little Columbine thing because I was in Colorado at the time. But and, and you people can say what they want about Columbine. But what you just described happened, which was parents stormed the police barricades. The kids were kids were falling out of the windows and breaking arms <laughs> trying to get out of there. Whether or not you believe exactly what happened happened, the, the reaction from the parents was absolutely legit. They were like, don't you dare think about staying between me and my kids because they, the, the, the police had no answers. 
police are like, well, you got it covered. It's like the hell you do. And, and, you know, I won't say that parents got arrested, but I'm sure some of them did. And then we're probably released. Who've lost a loved one. If there's a body to be seen, no matter what condition the body is in, want to see it's called closure. And I have personal proof of this. My mother in 2014 was living in Kalamazoo, Michigan in the house that she and my father shared, but she had been living alone since he died in 2008. I'd call her all the time and I called her one day. She didn't answer and I thought she was out with her friends. She, you know, did lots of social things. So, you know, and she wasn't sick or anything. So I thought nothing of it. I called the next day. She didn't answer. I messaged my brother. I was living in Houston as I still do at the time. My brother living in New Orleans. I messaged him and said, Hey, you talked to mom lately. He said, no, weird. I tried calling her. She didn't answer. And then I thought maybe something's wrong. So I messaged my sister. Now, my sister lives in Michigan. She lives not in Kalamazoo, but she lives in Grand Rapids, fairly close, but not next door neighbors. And I told my sister and she said, yeah, you know, I, I, I haven't been able to get a hold of her either. And I said to my sister, as my brother did on our three-way call, you've got to get over there. So my sister did, keeping us abreast on the phone. As she got there, she said that the door was locked and she realized that her key wouldn't work because my mother had locked the deadbolt. So my sister called the police. The police came to the house. I had to break down the door and go inside. A horrific stench met my sister's nose. And, you know, we were on the phone during all of this, and it was right. just horrible to hear it. We weren't watching. We were only hearing. And um, anyway, you know, my mother was uh, dead for several days. They didn't even know how long in the basement of the house. My sister, when they brought the body upstairs in a body bag, asked to see my mother. Now, my mother had been dead on the floor of a basement for several days. The smell mm -hmm. was horrible, but my sister still wanted to see my mother. And my mother had fallen and hit, hit her head on the ground. So blood had pooled. There was the smell of feces, urine. I mean, we all know how it goes when you die like that, or even <laughs> how you die, period. Sure. My sister still wanted to see my mom, and she told us she didn't even look like mom, but she still wanted to see her mother. And in Sandy Hook, no real parent would not want to see their child, even if they'd been shot in the head. Oh, yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. I mean, we how many times, not not to say that art imitates life, but how many times we see it in television and movies? It's like you have ID a body, you know, parents will go and, and randomly ID bodies until they find their kid. Even though they know whoever's on that slab is their child, they will go, you know, they absolutely will want to You've see You've got it. to know. You've got, got know. to know. And even me with, you know, I don't have children, but I have cats. I had one cat who I don't know how they died. I, I found out that a car hit and an ex-boyfriend of mine found my cat and buried the cat and didn't tell me for a year. But the thing is, is that he did me a disservice. Right. I wanted to know because I still for a very long time would call for my cat every night. You need to have the evidence. That's what makes it so hard on parents who have children in the military and their child was lost at sea or this or that blown up. Right. You need, you, we, we need to know humans. We need to know. What made him cave in by the way, the boyfriend. Oh, we were out riding bikes one day and I was calling the cat's name noir and no, I are black cat. And then he said, you don't need a call for noir anymore. And I'm like, why? And then he told me, and that was just, that was it? That Randomly, he just, he just, yeah. He just decided, yeah, it's probably a good enough time. Yeah, and I broke up with him. <laughs> <laughs> was it because of that? Kind of, yeah. Oh, wow. I well, mean, yeah, he lied to year. me for a year and let me cry, let me suffer. Um, hmm. yeah. Man. <laughs> I, w I, I have a long list of people I've broken up with, and I'm not even super hard on people. Um, you know, I'm not a hard, hard taskmaster of a girlfriend, but you know, there's certain things, love, honor, trust, respect, you violate that and bye. Mm. Anyway, wow. on a, on a brighter note, happy Valentine's day, everyone. <laughs> happy Valentine's day, everybody. <laughs> Death and murder. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's why the secret show doesn't make any sense to anyone ever who doesn't know we here know, but those who just come upon this say they don't even talk about flat earth. We do. All these things are related because yeah. we're really talking about human lives and our own dignity. I'm getting a drink while I'm talking. Oh, our, our dignity and self-respect that we all have that have been violated by the powers that should not be who have lied to us about the very shape of where we live. Right. It's 
messed up. Very, very true. Yeah. Another drink of my drink here, my Exo Cafe Patron coffee flavored liqueur. Can't you just drink normal things? I shouldn't say that because <laughs> you're not normal. The answer is no. That's not true. I mean, I like normal stuff, wine and water and whatever. I hope the chat room knows that I, that I will never. I'm not going to be wearing red for an entire year now until next Valentine's Day. <laughs> when you go into mourning again for love. <laughs> no, I'm just no. I don't own really any red um, because I can't pull it. It's not my skin tone. You know what? I have a few red things, but I don't um, really wear red or pink that much. You know, yeah, but you can you can do just about any color. Well, let's talk more about flat Earth stuff. Newsweek magazine did a story that says Beijing has criticized a recent U.S. report accusing China and Russia of attempting to militarize outer space, you know, the whole Space Force right. shambolic event, um, with the apparent justification for President Donald Trump's global missile defense plan. It was a report published Monday, and the Defense Intelligence Agency found that China and Russia in particular have taken steps to challenge the United States in space, including through the development of surveillance networks. So maybe that's what this whole Space Force is all about. I mean, for me and you and many of us, when we first heard about Space Force, of course, we laughed because we know that's never going to happen. We thought, what's, what's it all about? Is it about, I think you uh, proposed that it could be about getting more people into the military because people aren't volunteering anymore. Just tell them that they're oh, going to be involved in space. Volunteering. But it also could be for some other, other wider agenda, such as this here. Um, it's also been called just plain old space programming, but there could be something involved getting us involved in war. I mean, we're, we've always been involved in war, like in the book 1984. It's a space you know, force. Eternal war with everyone everywhere. I mean, that's space, what's happening. Space, as you and I know, space force sounds like a good idea. But really. you know, on the surface, it sounds like, oh, that sounds like a cool thing. You know, space marines from aliens or starship troopers or whatever it is. The problem with space force is what I said in the beginning, and that is, the other armed forces who have been established, oh, I don't know, since the 1700s, uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, well, not the Air Force, and Marines and Coast Guard, but we'll t take the big four. They've had recruiting problems for a while now anyway. And all of a sudden, you're going to introduce something that's high tech, that's really cool. You know, it, and that is so Space Force, you know, it's something that can be linked back to just about every science fiction movie we've had over the last 30 years. That is going to, I mean, if you were going to pick something, I'm seriously, if we had to be drafted tomorrow, I would pick Space Force. You know, it, it, well, just, then you I, wouldn't have to do it. If I was flat earth, I'd pick <laughs> because <space>. it's fake. <laughs> well, just because, okay, I'm kind of curious because you, it's not like you can just say, okay, we're going to create Space Force. Do you know the infrastructure you'd have to build? Where are the training camps? Um, who, who are going to be all the officers? What exactly is your curriculum? Uh, what happens once you get past boot camp? There's so many things, and not only that, but you're drawing away from the Army, Navy, and Air Force, and Marines. You, the, you, they're never going to allow it. All the brass from those other four groups, which are big, big, old, old groups, they're not going to stand for it. They're going to be like, uh, yeah, you real. They're going to they drag their feet and any friends that they have. Because remember, the, just, just to create the infrastructure for the Space Force, you're going to have to recruit from different branches. It's not like you, you, there are no generals in the Space Force right now. So you're going to have to grab officers from other groups to, to bring them in. They're, they're never going to go for it. They're, they're going to be like, no, it's a stupid idea. It could be just like Elon Musk's whole thing. Just talk about something and put it out there, but you don't need yeah. to do anything about it due to the fact that people have short memories. Like what about the Star Wars program uh, Ronald Reagan started? That's right. being mentioned by DNAVPI in the live chat. It was supposedly right. fully operational. Supposedly, but even though we don't see any of it, of course, even if it was fully operational, and that's the pure genius of it, even if it was fully operational, it's all classified. So we'd never be allowed to see it anyway. It's like, okay, so you could take the money and invent any <laughs> Star Wars system you wanted and just say, oh, yeah, it's totally built. We already got it. But really? What do we spend the $50 billion on? Oh, we got it covered. Don't worry about that. <laughs> They'll take your money. They'll absolutely take your money. Well, uh, the Chinese, uh, excuse me, the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson said about the story I'm mentioning, you know, the whole Space Force and 
China and whatever, everybody getting mad. Uh, he says, I want to make it perfectly clear that outer space belongs to all mankind. It's not exclusively owned by any one country, aka the USA, and especially not the private property of the United States. And that was reiterated with the movie First Man, starring Canadian Ryan Gosling and directed by a Canadian as well, because when they were at the, when they were trying to answer to Fox News, you know, that they're a rah rah go team network. And they said, okay, why didn't you show the American flag on the moon? Uh, the Canadian director said, well, it's because it's a human achievement, not an American achievement. It's like, uh, not, not so fast. You it's an American embarrassment. But if, if it were real, it is an American achievement. If any group gets to claim credit for faking the moon landing, it should be the Americans. <laughs> Yeah, Americans well, you know, I, are I heard Scotland's getting a space program. I don't know if that's true or not, but somebody messaged me and told me about that. Well, you know, the one that it did announce it officially was Turkey. And it's like, yeah, if you want to make some money on the yeah, side. Yeah, like money. Yeah, you want to make some serious <laughs> cash money on the side and blueprint it off what the United States and the Europeans and the Russians and India and Japan and China. And so, am I missing anybody? don't think well i'm not going to count the uk because the uk i think was smart enough not to get involved well i mean they've got they've got stuff i mean yeah but only a few only a few guys they tim, don't have a program. Uh, tim peak you know yeah but they're not launching off of everything i think i think actually the uk was was smart enough they're like yeah we're we don't need to get involved to the point where one of their james bond movies made fun in the 1970s the early 70s when sean connery was still a james bond did the, the I think best Diamond, James Bond aside from the current James Bond? Aside from who is there is no current James Bond right now. Well, I, th yeah, I heard yeah. the Daniel Craig's coming back, but yeah, I don't know. Daniel Craig to me is is the modern day version of a form of Sean Connery. I like both of those two, and the others they're okay. Um, I know who Bro you I'm like. Pierce, I'm a Pierce Brosnan. Guy. I know. I, he's I, a see. I think I think he would have been great. Uh, he, if he had a longer run, remember, because he was supposed to, they would, CBS, the Americans screwed it up for him. CBS wouldn't allow him out of his contract with Remington Steel. And so he missed two movies and they had to grab Timothy Dalton, who did fine. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the point was, is that in the movie Diamonds Are Forever, you guys can look up the clip. I thought it was fantastic. Well, Sean Connery was escaping the bad guys and they were running across a movie set and it was an Apollo mission moving set. And the, and the astronauts on the set, they're going, get him, had to stay in character. So they were running in slow motion and they couldn't catch him. That was brilliant. They grabbed yeah. the, a rover that was even better than the rover they were using. And the person I know in my life that was the number one James Bond fan and Sean Connery fan was my Scottish ex-boyfriend. It was a while ago, prior to my Flat Earth Awakening. And uh, he loved James Bond movies. And he's the first person who ever told me that we didn't go to the moon. And he told me, you know, in Scotland, UK in general, a lot of us don't think that we went to the moon. And for me, that was like, really? But guess what? I still didn't look into it. Not until Flat Earth, right before uh, Flat Earth. I'm sorry, correction. Uh, of course, it's the internet. I love them. Uh, Remington Steel was NBC. Oh, okay. You not know what? CBS. In the live chat, Darren Wagner is saying NBC, not CBS. Not CBS. My gosh, you people are smart. Well, again, the hive mind, they miss nothing. We wish, like we had said earlier, we could go back in and edit out the mistakes that we make. But you know our intentions are good, and that's all that matters. That is true. Uh, another channel I want to mention, Ed, that you know, an odd channel that's covering Flat Earth that really mm -hmm. shouldn't be, which they did a thing three days ago. You probably caught it, was Travel Trolls TV. Did I see that? And and that is a British guy, and let me read his mission statement, <clears throat> traveling across the whole of the UK for the next 10 years with my sidekick, Mazzy, as well as we attempt to gather the largest collection of sightseeing videos ever made in the UK. And so you know, that, they cover castles and, and this bed and breakfast and this and this and this. And what does he do three days ago? Day 29, flat earth, you can't be serious. <laughs> and he's got a flat earth logo in the whole, is it? The, the day before was the best mixed grill in the world. Before that, bullied by a gaggle of geese. And then he jumps to flat earth. Why? Because apparently it, it's starting to seep into people's heads. Maybe it, maybe there's something more to this. Maybe it's not just what they're searching. Maybe it's actually, remember the hundredth monkey effect, which I've been waiting for for a long time, where once it hits a certain point, all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, people are aware of it. 
It's like, yes, Flat Earth. I must discuss this on my channel. <laughs> Even I though my channel <laughs> does does medical devices. You say, well, hey, you know what? We welcome all comers. We do. We do. So uh, good for you. And I actually wrote him and uh, said thanks. Oh yeah, that's cool. And he was any. And, and by the way, he wasn't. Um, he wasn't negative. He was saying, you know what? And and it's great because his whole it's he's walking constantly, you know, because he's doing this hiking thing, you know, where he's traveling across the UK. And so he's walking, doing one of these uh, podcasts. It's cool. I want to say hi to Bali Music Journey and Jack Frost. Hello. And all people, free people. David is here too. And Joseph Roche and Angel Raven 444 is here. And John 1151KJB is here too. I hope I said the name right That's... this time. Oh, that's, it a Bible, that's a Bible time. verse. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I said it wrong last time. I mean, <laughs> oh, and Zoe, be here in love. Hello. You have to send it. You have to say it with more righteousness. Yes, exactly. Isaiah forty, verse twenty-two. <laughs> All right, new, uh, new, new, new story in. Beep, 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 beep. That's the teletype machine. With the really, that, that's the sort of budget back. we have. Is, yeah, that is, is you the saying beep, you beep, 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 beep. Zero. <laughs> uh, Mark Kelly, you know Mark Kelly, he was a retired astronaut. Scott Kelly, the man part of the uh, Kelly twins. For a year. Right. Yeah. The actual Ooh, twins. Weird. There's twins involved yeah. with NASA. Who would have ever thought? Anyway, thought. Uh, he's a retired astronaut and husband, a former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords, which is a whole other oh, story for another place in time. Anyway, Mark Kelly in Phoenix is running for late John McCain's Senate seat, so that's going to be his new mission should he choose to accept it he posted a video on his website showing this and uh talking about it and in addition to being a nasa astronaut he is also a u.s navy combat pilot and engineer he is a democratic recruit he's going to challenge a republican senator named martha martha mcsally and yeah so that's what's going on with him um you know you go in space, where well, you pretend to go in space, and then little benefits come your way. Well, it's not just that. You got to remember that when you go in space, you're actually a fairly, they don't talk about it. You're a high ranking officer in the United States Air Force. Most of the people that go up are, they come out by the time they're done, they're colonels. And in fact, I remember one was a lieutenant general by the time he got out. And I know their rank technically would be commander in Air Force, but uh, that's an equivalent of a full bird colonel. As far as I know. Well, he's a big proponent of gun control. So that ties back in with Sandy Hook and that ties back in with everything we've been discussing today. Yeah, that, that's smart to be a, an ex-military guy in, in favor of gun control. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, do want to wish Roxanne Glenn, uh, Roxanne the Globalist Denier, a happy birthday, which will be tomorrow, which is actually Valentine's Day, which is February 14th. This is February 13th. And there's something else that's happening. I, you know, I, maybe we should be wrapping things up. We, do you have anything else to bring to the table? Mr. Uh, Mark Sargent. No, I don't think I do. Everything is going going great. I I just looking through the headlines and yes. uh, nothing nothing really. Oh, and are we allowed to talk about the thing we're doing while we're at the uh, Question Everything conference, which you mentioned while I was getting my cocktail? Uh, the interview we're going to. Well, the other thing. No. Okay. No. Well, we can't mention by name, but we can say. Oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do another celebrity dinner so. with the same celebrity we've had dinner with before, and those yeah. who know who it is, they know. Hopefully, those who hopefully don't, we can't say. Don't have any surprise guests. Yeah, uh, but just we're, a person uh, who's a closet flat earther who's famous. Yeah, but they're totally normal and nice too. Yeah. So we're doing that during the Question Everything conference. Well, during the time that we're there at uh, Yorba Yorba Linda, California. Right, and, and then we're um, going to uh, an interview with a fairly big group of uh, the Fallen TV. It's a big, big outfit over in. Um, that sounds Christian. Fallen. Nope, 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 no? nope. No, you know what? I'm screwing it up. It is one second. Look it up. The it internet is, tells all. I can tell you real, real fast. It is. Oh, the Fallen State. So uh, and they're over on Pico. So we're going over there. So the fallen right. state TV in, in studio interview. So that'll be kind of fun. Um, hello to Arwen. Didn't see you here. And um, happy Valentine's Day to Cammy, Aisling 717. And, uh, and Bob of Globusters. Lovely flat earth married couple. You and I are the flat earth couple that's not a couple. <laughs> we are in some weird way. Um, 
As we close our show out, I want to let everybody know that going on right now on the Red Pill, Red Pill Philosophy channel is a debate beginning soon. All right. With Godless Engineer. So before you leave, love ya. Happy Valentine's Day. Go over there. Give the video a thumbs up. I totally appreciate you being here. Tomorrow at 4 p.m., excuse me, 5 p.m., no, 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Eastern Time. No, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Ugh. Wow. Five, no, I just keep forgetting. It's 5 p.m. Eastern Time tomorrow, Uncurved with Nathan Oakley. Okay? That's February 14th, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Uncurved with Nathan Oakley. And then Friday, the 15th, at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Russian Vids is going to be my guest. You're going to make Nathan wear red? No, because this is a Valentine's Day show. Fine. He gets off easy. Yeah. Nathan and I, well, Nathan's colorblind. He wouldn't know what he was wearing. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> anyway, love everybody. Thank you for being here. See you over at Red Hill Philosophy's channel as he debates Godless Engineer, if that indeed actually is occurring. And bye-bye. Hey, Nathan, Later. what color am I wearing? Hail Hydra, <laughs> George Clooney. I bet he would probably just plain old say. Seriously, Ray. are you? You're, you're not going to hit the button. Not until I take my glasses off. Bye. <laughs>